Hello everybody, it's Adrian for Webcar.my and I'm all about the details. Let us welcome our new video host, Jason. Jason here is a professional driving instructor prior to joining us at Webcar.my and we are very happy to have him on board. Uh, thank you, Adrian. I'm Jason. Uh, very uh, nice to meet all of you. I look forward to working with Adrian in future reviews, but right now, the Mazda CX-30. What my greatest take out from, from the Jinba Itai philosophy is it uses the human anatomy naturally yes. to sculpt the seats, to sculpt the steering wheel. I've seen them putting sensors while doing their R&D on the hands. So when you turn, look at this steering wheel here. Some cars, they do, they have steering wheels that are tilted almost 45 degrees. Mm. A bit like a bus van You're right. impression. Yeah, so the Mazdas, all of it, the current models, they don't do that. It's almost... 90 degrees, you know, it's it sits very flat. So I think the key word here is it makes you feel very natural, right? Exactly, you know, there is no great effort in turning the wheel, everything feels progressive, and the most important thing is it feels like some the people who designed this car they had a cohesive mindset, you know. So basically, the person who tuned the steering also tuned the accelerator pedal to match it. So now I'm holding gear and I'm accelerating and I'm putting 30% throttle input and it's holding the gear. The moment I back off, it drops the gear. Again, cohesive. It just makes sense. It just responds to your input. Same with the braking. If you put 10% braking force, it will return 10%. Yes. That is what I admire most about masters, master cars because they, they really just give you this progressive, linear, cohesive feeling when you drive. And this car is no different. So it's, it's and it's well insulated. There's yes. not much noise. Yep. Yep, uh, we're having a little bit of drizzle here uh, on the road we're, we're driving. You know, it, this is not the smoothest patch of, patch of road, but it's still very well insulated. You don't hear the car next to us, you know, we can kind of whisper and you can still hear us. Yeah, we can have a clearly. very good conversation easily, yes. so... And I think this is the biggest step up compared to previous generation Mazdas. Like, for example, my generation of Mazda. Correct. It's very noisy, but this one, Yes, silence. So you don't get the wall of torque, like you know, I'm climbing a hill right now. You don't get a wall of torque even when you put the power down, but it's progressive. You know how to, the, the engine and transmission knows how to work to get the maximum torque out of that situation. It doesn't shove you in the back like turbocharged engines because sometimes turbocharged engines can give you too much torque and it becomes unsmooth. You lurch forward too, too much and then because of that, the driver realized, oh, I've put in too much acceleration that it proceeds to back off and then you go the other, the other direct direction. Again, back to that word we, uh, Jason keeps on emphasizing, linear. linear. It's very linear. Yes. This uh, two-liter Skyactiv-G petrol engine makes you know, only 163 horsepower and 230 newton meters of torque. Not a lot by today's standards. You know, the Civic Turbo makes about 177 horsepower or something like that. But again, the key word here being is linear power delivery. It's Absolutely. just smooth, silky smooth. Yes. And the gear shifts, some people call it um, slow, clunky. In <laughs> my opinion, I think that is very wrong. Mazda Sky Active transmission, automatic transmission, shifts in a way that it doesn't send a jolt. It's very smooth. Yeah. It's not slow. It kind of gives you that impression. Yeah, it gives you the impression of being slow, but it's actually not. Yeah, in fact, it is very responsive. Look, I'm just dropping a gear to overtake this car on the left, and it just drops a gear on my throttle input intuitively. Mm. Yeah, there is no delay. Some cars go hunting, hunting and hunting for gears. Skyactiv's uh, transmission doesn't do that at all. Ahead of us is another series of bends. So we're gonna have a bit of a uh, slide. I'm just gonna pitch the car into corners and, you know, just see how it feels. Notice my body. I'm mm -hmm. not trying to fight the car yep. whatsoever. I'm just yeah. sitting naturally. Being a public road, we can't go really, really fast, but you know, it, we can still, you can feel what the car is doing. And 
I'm very familiar with this stretch of road. If uh, if anybody did that in a regular car, I would have my my head would be planting on the uh, side mm -hmm. windows. Mm -hmm. Nothing, no movement whatsoever. It's amazing. It's amazing. And I can feel what the four tires are doing. The car is, the car chassis is very communicative. Mm. It's not wooden. It's not it's not uh, you know it's not uh, very uh, uncommunicative. So it, it it tells you what it's doing. And it's very fluid. Yeah. Right. Very so fluid. it's really kind of best of both worlds. You do feel the center of gravity mm -hmm. for, for sure mm -hmm. because the car is slightly taller. But you know, it's not like the you know anytime it doesn't feel like it's gonna tip over kind of thing. Yes. It it feels good. It feels very very matured. This is the driving uh, this driving feeling. Mm. You know, again cohesive. Everybody who engineered this car came together with a common goal and they achieved it. At least from a driving point of view, from a dynamics point of view. Yes, you know. The CX30 is actually based on the Mazda 3. The Mazda 3 has a very aggressive design. You know, it looks like a predator going to jump on its prey. This one here, you know, I'm glad that Mazda has continued its SUV family face. It's a lot more subtle, a lot more relaxed at the front. Now, moving over to the side, this is, you know, a little bit of a controversy. I think it kind of gets in the way of the premiumness of the car because the rest of the car looks so expensive and then you have this plastic cladding running the span of the car which kind of gives it a, a more a less expensive feel would you say yeah and I, I, I'm not a fan of it I, I okay I can agree with Jason and I'm sure a lot of you do but to me actually I quite like this plastic cladding now we come to my favorite angle of the CX-30 the rear I agree with you I think the CX-30's best angle is actually at the rear, the way it just sculpts all the way to the side, and this tail lamp, if you look from certain angle, it bulges out. Another area where Mazda does form over function is in the car's proportions. You see, even though it shares the same platform as the Mazda 3, it actually has a 65mm shorter wheelbase compared to a Mazda 3 sedan and hatch. And I, it, it boggles my mind because this is an SUV. You know, normal car makers will make it as practical, as spacious as possible. But no, Mazda says this dimensions, this amount of wheelbase, is the perfect proportions to make this car a sleek looking SUV. If I may draw a bit of parallel, this car is a bit like the, it's compared to the Toyota CHR, where practicality and packaging is not its strongest suit. Yeah, but instead they give you a stylish, a very lifestyle-ish kind of package. And it, it shows, it looks good. You wanna just look at it all day, even after you've stopped driving it. It is that beautiful. Here's an interesting fact about the boot of the CX-30. It has a powered tailgate function, but it does not have that hands-free operation where you can do a kicking motion underneath to open it. So you have to press a button here or use it through the key. It opens up to 430 liters of boot space. Now to put that into perspective, it's significantly more than the Mazda 3 hatchback, but unfortunately, it's smaller than the Mazda 3 sedan. That has 444 liters of space, so about 14 liters less. So the shorter wheelbase also translates to a tighter cabin in here. Uh, Jason is 175 cm tall. This is your usual driving position. That's right. And I'm 175 cm tall too. This is the amount of knee room that I have. It's smaller than a Mazda 3 sedan or hatchback, but it's definitely more spacious than a CX-3. So other than the tight rear cabin space, the rest of the interior on the Mazda CX-30 is just top notch. It's exactly what you get in a Mazda 3 sedan or hatchback, 2 litre high variance. High quality leather upholstery, you get nice digital screen for the driver, heads up display, dual zone automatic climate control, a powered seat for the driver, and even a sunroof. The only two differences between a CX-30 and a Mazda 3's interior is this dashboard trim on the uh, near the MZD infotainment system. So in the CX-30, it wraps around the MZD, whereas in the Mazda 3, it goes behind it. So there's no hump in the center screen here. There's also extra stitching on the center armrest of the CX-30. What about you, Jason? What do you like and not like about this cabin? Yeah, what I really like about this car is, as with every Mazda, finding the perfect driving position 
is easy. It feels all natural. The steering, the pedal positioning, the way the back rests, the seats hug me. It's all very Mazda. And this is something that has been consistent in all their models currently, right? And my favorite, the MZD Connect, yeah? Only rotary controller now, no more touchscreen, but that is no hardship because this rotary controller is so intuitive. It just blows away everything else that I've used so far. And the best part about this, it also comes with Apple CarPlay and Android Auto as standard. So you're, you know, you're definitely covered in terms of connectivity. So how do we sum up the Mazda CX-30? The CX-30, I feel, is for people who need a smaller SUV. Somebody who not necessarily able to handle a large size SUV like a CRV or a CX-5. The CX-30 would fit their needs just right. Absolutely, I agree. And from a driving standpoint, as with all Mazdas, this is no different. It has GVC Plus, it drives very well. Yeah, and for something that runs on 18 inch wheels, it strikes a very good balance between being comfortable, yet it handles fairly decently. So even though this car is priced at 163,000 ringgit, which is a lot of money for a small car, but given the details that they've gone into, the engineering, the design, and being a fully imported model from Japan, I think, you know, the CX-30 offers good value for many. As always, thanks for watching. We hope you enjoyed this video. Make sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel for more videos like this. And let us know in the comment section below whether we should take a Mazda CX-30 over a Toyota CHR. See you in the next one.